everyone and welcome to my pushing guide. Pushing is the most important mechanic on the first boss of Hall of Chains, Soulless Horror. It's referred to this way because you'll be literally pushing the tormented dead, more commonly known as golems, out of the arena, as they explode on death and leave a big red AoE that corrupts boons and deals a lot of damage. Many classes are capable of taking care of this mechanic, but it is most commonly done as a druid. You can still provide all the usual boons while pushing, and with enough experience, you can even push as the only healer in the squad. To push, you'll need a staff for healing, and a longbow for the pushing itself. You'll also need Glyph of Tides taking up one of your utility skill slots. If you're the only alacrity source in your subgroup, you'll need to fill the remaining skill slots with spirits, water, frost, and stone. I also recommend using nature and keeping it on top of the group, as the passive healing from it will help with the high damage pressure on this boss. If you have another source of alacrity in your subgroup, you can replace water spirit with healing spring, as Condi Cleanse is useful here. The traits are pretty much the same as the usual marksmanship build, but make sure you have lead the wind so your longbow pierces, else your push might get body blocked. You also should swap windborn nodes in nature magic to spirited arrival, since you're not running a Warhorn. For your pets, bring Iboga for CC and confusion damage, and either Jacaranda for an immob if the golems aren't dying, or Siege Turtle for its projectile blocking bubble to lower the damage pressure from the worms attacking the squad. If you don't have enough CC, you can also bring Gazelle, but keep in mind it might send the golem flying if you don't control it properly. Due to high damage pressure of the fight, I highly recommend pushing in your high toughness set if you have one. But if you don't, you can also do it in Harrier, it will just be more difficult to stay alive. I went over the specific builds in one of my previous guides, linked in the description. Let's first define what a good push is. The easiest way to tell that the pushing is good is when you feel like there's no golem AoEs covering the arena at all. As the fight goes on, the platform will keep getting smaller, but there is nothing preventing golems from getting pushed outside of it, meaning that your goal should be to get them out as much as possible. As for what not to do, the worst case scenario is a golem exploding on top of the boss. If that happens, you need to yell at everyone to move right this instant. Another really bad case is if the golem explodes in the middle or close to the middle, preventing the group from repositioning to a different spot to avoid the walls. Ideally, you also want to avoid the group getting sandwiched in between two AoEs, as you should never tank next to them so people have space to do their rotation and you have the space to position for the next pushes. The general idea behind pushing is that you need to position yourself next to the golem, opposite of where you want it to be pushed. The golem always spawns in the middle of the arena, but you should absolutely never push it away from the group because you won't be able to push it far enough this way. Instead, you should let it walk closer to the group and then push either through the group or at an angle next to the group, aiming for it to go outside of the arena. Keep in mind that pushing through the group is not always wise, but sometimes necessary. I'll go over specific cases at the end of this video. The ideal scenario is that the golem dies as soon as it is pushed out, but it may happen it will die during the push or it won't die at all and walk back to the group. That's also covered in the same section. At the start of the fight, you play Druid as normal. Spawn your spirits, press them for alacrity and enter CA to give mind. It's also very important to pet swap upon entering combat and keep swapping pets off cooldown as that will cover the boons you would normally give with your Warhorn. The golems will start spawning after Solace Horror reaches 90% HP, but not immediately upon hitting that threshold. Instead, the first one will always spawn when the next wall is in the center of the arena, and then from that point onwards, they will keep spawning every 20 seconds. Swap to Longbow when the first golem is about to spawn. When you see it, position yourself for the push, press your gl Glyph of Tides, and wait for the epi to hit or the golem to get cleaved a little if needed and press your point blank shot to push it further out. Sometimes you'll need to do both pushes immediately one after another, but sometimes it won't die if you do that and you'll need to wait a little. If you're pagging, the first golem is often messy and based on how it went, you can adjust the timing and direction of your pushes to your group. Between golems, you want to enter CA if possible. 
So aside from pressing spirits and pen swapping to give boons, you essentially glyph, longbow four, enter CA, heal, 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 and leave CA once your glyph is coming off cooldown to once again position yourself for the push, glyph, and longbow four. Just continue doing this for the rest of the fight. If you have too many healers, you might not be able to always enter CA, but that will also mean you don't need to, so you can just AFK. If you want to be a better druid, once you're comfortable with the basic rotation, you can also start adding swapping to stuff. You can't always weapon swap, you can only do it every second golem. I know, however, that it can be very difficult to keep track of what every second golem is, so here's a little trick. If you can swap to stuff immediately after pushing the golem, you can swap. Do not swap to stuff at any other point in time, only immediately after pushing the golem. If your weapon swap is on cooldown, it means you're on the loop where you have to stay on longbow. So here's an example rotation. The golem spawns, you glyph, longbow 4, longbow 2 to kill it, swap to stuff, you can immobilize the golem with stuff 4, heal the group with staff skills, and obviously enter CA. Next golem spawns. You swap to longbow, glyph, longbow 4, you can't swap, instead enter CA and heal the group. Keep healing, Next golem spawns, you glyph, longbow 4, immediately swap to stuff, and continue like this throughout the fight. It might be a little tricky to pull off, so I advise doing this only once you're more comfortable with pushing, but swapping to stuff gives you access to more immob, more healing, mobility from ancestral grace, and projectile block on sublime conversion. Now, let's talk about problems you may run into and how to solve them. Problem number one, your pushes are getting interrupted. Dazes, stuns, and other hard CCs can interrupt a push, which means you will cast your tides or long before and it will look like the golem got stuck in place. The solution to that is that you kindly ask your group to stop using hard CCs, or if they don't know what skills they are pressing, you can circumvent the issue by pushing to the side instead of through the group. Next common issue, you push the golem, but it doesn't die, and instead it walks back to the group and then proceeds to die on top of the boss. If you have a scourge with Epi, you can try asking them to place a shade on the golem in addition to pressing Epi. That way, it will not only get cleaved more, but it also allows them to fear the golem by pressing a 4 if needed. If you don't have a scourge, you need to push more through the group, and maybe even wait with your longbow 4 after initial tides to let the golem get cleaved more, but do remember that power damage will burst the golem real fast, so you don't want to do this with power classes in your squad. If you can't push through the group and don't have a scourge, bring a jacaranda, push the golem, immob it, and pray for the condis to keep on taking. Next issue, the golem is dying too fast. If you have too many power classes or your group has just really high DPS and a lot of cleave, the golem might die really fast if you let it anywhere near the group. The solution is to push it before it reaches the group at an, an angle. Still towards the outside of the arena, but more to the side to avoid it getting cleaved as much. Next issue. I don't have quickness and I keep interrupting my tides with longbow 4. Check the log or boon table. If your entire subgroup has low quickness uptime, you can kindly ask your quickness provider if they can increase their boon duration or double check their build. If you're the only person in your subgroup lacking quickness, that means you're moving too much out for pushing the golem and you're not stacking on the boss, which results in not receiving boons. Try to stay on the group more. If you tried to solve the problem and still don't have quickness, you should look at the cast bar of tides and press longbow 4 only once the cast bar finishes to make sure you don't interrupt it. Next issue. The golem gets immobilized as soon as it spawns and it never walks close, so you have to go to Naranya to be able to push it and then it doesn't get cleaved. Well, the only solution here is to kindly ask your group to stop immobilizing the golem. Yes, I know, I fail you. Next, 
the golem immediately gets knocked by someone else away from the group, which makes it impossible for it to get cleaved and die. Sorry, but this is once again a talk to your group and tell them to stop doing this situation. There's only so much you can do when your squad is actively PvPing each other. Next issue. The off tank likes to stand somewhere in Narnia or walks around the opposite end of the wall than the rest of the group and the golem ends up in Narnia as well. The golem will always aggro on the tank who is currently not tanking. The off tank should be aware of this and always stack on the group so he can push more easily. If they aren't doing this, you should kindly ask them to do so. Last question. I wanna learn how to tank and push at the same time. Well, my sincere advice, don't. And I say this as someone who's done it a lot. It's not only difficult, but also highly dependent on your group whether it's even possible, and even then it's not always going to be clean since it's a bit RNG dependent. If you insist, learn to tank really well, watch my tanking guide, make sure you know how to sidestep the auto attacks, and learn how to push really well, then attempt to combine the two. You push as normal when you're not tanking, just keep in mind you're the aggro so you don't walk too far out since the golem will always walk to you. And when you're tanking, you wanna wait until SH is locked in an animation to walk a little out into the group and push behind you. Keep in mind it's not always 100% possible for this to work, it won't work in every group and your pushing will be much cleaner if you let other people handle the tanking. Use this as last measure only. This applies both to bad groups and good groups. Lastly, I would like to show you an example of an SH where my pushing was actually really clean and something to learn from. I hope you learned a lot from this guide and as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments, on my discord or in my stream chat. Thanks for watching!